good afternoon, quilty friends. Today, I'm gonna to do a tutorial on how to do this tall pine tree. So in this pine, you can see I have one block finished right here. It finishes at nine inches by 30 inches tall. So unfinished, it's nine and a half by 30 and a half. And um, I wanted to do this tutorial for, it's this block right here in the Let's Make a Snowman sew along, except we're not putting the applique star on it, only in the quilt we are, but I wanted to show you this tutorial, not only for the sew along, but because I wanted to do a fun project with it. Okay, and so I'm going to be making two trees for the project. And so I've got one finished so that you can see what that looks like. And then um, I've got kind of half of this one finished. Now, um, in the sew along guide here, if you're doing this so long, we've got the cutting. Let me find it real quick. Okay, so in the sew along guide, you've got the cutting right here for the tree. And um, it talks about the star in there too, but again, only the star we're gonna be using in the sew along. Um, and then this is for a different project and I will show you the rest of the project next week. But, so I've got everything cut here and labeled according to the sew along guide. And um, I do have one extra little piece that th these two are the same size. In the sew along, I just wanted to um, take note that this is actually cut one and a half by nine and a half because that tree finishes at 29 inches tall. This tree for this project is gonna finish at 30 inches tall. And so this is cut two and a half by nine and a half just exactly like the B one is, but I just want to clarify that. And of course, I'll put that in my blog post uh, about this sew along so that you know. But if you're just making this tree for another project and not, not the sew along, um, and you don't have a sew along guide, just be sure to um, look in the description of this video and I'll have all of the cutting for you, okay? And so what I've started to do is started to do the easy corner triangles on the sides of these trees right here. For the very top one, this is piece H. And then for this uh, easy corner triangle, it's C right here, okay? And I normally do not mark the lines across because I use this center line, but I've learned in filming that you guys like to see the line marked so that you can see exactly which direction I'm sewing. And so all I do with that is I just take a pencil and a ruler and I just mark from point to point. So, um, but when I'm not filming and, you know, I don't need to clarify the lines for me because I can see them right here on the center line. And so this top piece right here is basically like a flying goose, like a flying geese. And so you have to do one side first and trim it and press it open and then do the other side. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do right here. I'm gonna make sure that my seam still lies flat there as it's going under the machine. And this is what I mean by, see, I'm just following that corner right here along that center line. The center line is lined up with the needle in my machine. I use these graphs right here to line up with all the straight lines on whatever machine you're using so that I know that this center line comes out straight, okay? And so now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side of these, and this is the D squares, background squares, and I've marked those so that you can see that what you're doing is laying it this way. This is kind of upside down so that you can see that angles go right here. And I just, when I line them up, I lay them up corner to corner so that they're, I can't see, you know, the green fabric underneath. And then I know it's exactly lined up. And now I'm just sewing on the line, but normally I would just be following that center line. Okay. So I'm gonna keep doing that for all of these right here, doing the other side. For this one, this is the E background square, okay? And this is for the little Christmas tree stand. If you can see that right there down at the bottom. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew that on the other side just so that you can see how I'm doing that. I'm 
just going to put a scrap of fabric under there. I like to use a scrap of fabric a lot of times in between while I'm filming instead of making my bonus quilts so that, um, you know, the fabric feeds in easily and I save on thread. So basically what I'm doing for all three pieces here, oh, I've got this other piece that I need to trim off. I press the seams, okay, I set those seams in and then I go ahead and take these larger scissors and I just trim an approximate quarter inch. It can be a little bit larger. I don't, I'd rather have it when I'm trimming a little bit larger than smaller because if you trim it too small, those seams might have a tendency to pop up. And so I just like to have a, at least a quarter of an inch seam. But again, it doesn't have to be exact. And then I press these seams open and just so that I can have the block lie flat. And what I do is I just open them up. I use my roller right here just to kind of open it. And then I press down with the iron. And I don't, I do not iron. I try not to iron back and forth because this seam is on the angle. It's already sewn, but you still can distort it if you iron back and forth too much. And so that's what I like to do is just open it and the reason I use this is because it's got a nice flat thing and it opens right to those threads. It opens all the way. I wanna make sure it's open all the way before I can press. And so basically I don't wanna distort this at all. I want this, th this rectangle was cut seven inches wide and I want it to remain seven inches wide but just have triangles on the sides of background, so I'm just replacing those corners with another fabric, but I'm still keeping it the same size. I hope that makes sense. Now, when I'm crossing over seams like this, I'll take this and really press down right there, you know, put a little bit more pressure right where those seams line up, and that helps to keep those open. And I like to press this, once again, nice and flat, and then I just bring the clappers in because these will absorb the heat, I, I don't know if I wanna say absorb, but just you know, bring up the heat. This is on a nice flat surface and this keeps it nice and flat with the weight. And sometimes if I feel like it needs to be heavier, I'll stack more on top, okay? And then when these cool down, it's nice and flat. See, that seam is nice and flat, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same step on the rest of all of these. I'm gonna put my tree stand down here and then I'll be back and we'll sew um, the rest of the block together. Okay, so what I did was I went ahead and joined all of these sections together. So I had to put the top of the pine tree so there's, you know, this consists of the six boughs of the top of the pine tree, and I, ha I joined them all together before I could add these little um, borders, the F borders on the side, okay? And then what I did with that, let me show you that here, is I, so of course, pressed everything open like I showed you along the way, except for these side borders. I didn't feel like that they needed to be pressed open. I just pressed them towards the borders. Okay, and made and rolled them and everything and made sure they were flat. Okay, so now I've got that and I can go ahead and sew the top piece on that, which is um, piece B. So I'm going to do that real quick. And I'm just using my Seam So Easy Guide and I'm following this red line right here, which is the quarter inch on this side. Okay, and then I've got this side right here and this side right here. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> to add to the stand. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in first. 
And this is just kind of how I sew a block. I just, it's a process of elimination. I just do the biggest pieces first. First I do all of the easy corner triangles and get everything back into squares and rectangles or whatever, you know, that I cut them. Only they have the triangles on the corners. And then I go ahead and just, I just start assembling just like a puzzle. Now this one, I'm gonna go ahead and press towards the seam as well. Okay, and then sometimes, especially because I'm pressing towards the seam, I'll take the roller after I've pressed and make sure that's flat. And then I'll just let some clappers rest on that for a minute while I'm doing the other side. Now this, this is piece C right here, and this is a little bit tricky. In the cutting, it's, it's cut, um, see how you can see that it's taller that way? but it fits that way, and so that's how you'll know, you know, when you go ahead, wait, that's not C, sorry, A. <laughs> C, A is wider than it is taller, and so when you go to, it's just a quarter inch difference, that's how I knew that C was wrong, because I was like, I knew it was only a quarter inch difference. So when you go to sew it to the trunk, you'll know that that's the way you sew it, is you have to turn it so that it measures the same height as the trunk, and those are the two A pieces. Okay. I mean, you can always get your ruler out and measure and everything again, but th that's just a quick way to find out. If it doesn't fit your trunk piece, then you know that's not the way that you sew it on. And then I'm going to put a scrap of fabric through here because I want to press these so that I can sew these together. That should be cool enough. I'm just going to set that over here real quick. I made this um, design board for my cross stitch. It's just on a great big piece of foam core board, like I how, how I make my other design boards that I have the tutorials for, but I didn't put an edging on this. This is for my cross stitches when I press my cross stitches and go in to pick out frames or take them to the framers, so I want them to lay, lie flat. And I have some quite large cross stitches, so I did that uh, design board, and I thought, oh, this would be perfect for this tall pine tree, right? Okay, let me press that open right there. And let that cool for just a second. I normally would, you know, keep that a little bit longer on there, but I think it's good. And now I'm just going to join that. Now this is designed so that, um, see right here at the bottom, this doesn't meet. You don't have to worry about matching up seams or points or anything like that. Okay, it just needs to be nine and a half across. The whole block is nine and a half inches wide at this point, unfinished, and so that's all we have to worry about, that they meet at the beginning and at the end. Now you can pin if you want to, but I just always use my sewing machine as kind of my stand-in, stunt double pin by sewing in the beginning with them lined up and then I line them up at the end here. And then I just kind of make sure that those edges are lined up as I'm going along. And, and that's how I pin. I use my fingers. Now, I did pin when I did these long board. When I do long borders, you can pin or things like that. And that's when I do pin. But when I'm doing these short um, patchwork segments that I feel that I can control, you know, with my fingers, that's what I do. I just like to shift it that way. But of course, there's no right or wrong way. If you're a pinner and you feel better about pinning, then, you know, go for it. Do what works best for you at all times. We all get the same end result. Okay, so then I'm gonna open this seam up and roll it, especially on those intersections so that that's open. press it. And then just put one of the long clappers across there so that that fits. And so while that's cooling for a minute, let me talk about um, this project. So what I'm going to do is two trees and then I've got a nice big block in the center that's going to go in the center and it's going to be really cute. I'm going to show it to you next week. I'm going to do um, that tutorial. Cassidy's not going to be available to film me next week and so I'm going to try to do it on my own, which I have never, you know, I do my crochet videos on my own now and things like that, but, and my um, punch needle 
but I'm going to, I'm going to see how that goes. I'm going to set it up about where Cassidy is standing right there to film me. And, um, we're going to see if we can, you know, if I can do that myself and we'll see how that goes. But, um, what I'm going to do is put a block in the middle and the tree, a tree on each side, and it will be a table topper that can be used at Christmas time on my farm table. But I also wanted to let you know that, um, I'll just keep talking as I'm sewing this now. Now it's time to join this at the bottom. I also wanted to let you know that you can make a quilt out of this block or pillows or whatever by just sewing several trees together. You can get 30 inch pillow forms. That would be fun to sew several together and um, make a pillow form, just put background around them if you want or something like that, or make a bed runner by sewing you know, a bunch of trees together, and that would be 30 inches tall. But you can also, okay, let me finish this scene before I show you. I talk with my hands so much, I want to be able to point out what I'm, what I'm going to be showing you. So let's do this scene here. And then I'm going to do one last scene here, which is adding the bottom right here. And then I'll just press them both at the same time. And then the block will be complete. And then I can talk about further projects. So see how it's just kind of easing that fabric in to be lined up exactly the same? And that just saves me from pinning. Okay. set both of these seams. This one I'm going to press first because I'm going to press it towards the border just like I did the top. Okay, I'm going to roll that. Then I'm going to turn it around, put a clapper on that, open this up. Get my roller. Here, read down there playing downstairs, and then um, so when I do move my iron like this, I, I just kind of move it back and forth a little bit just to make sure I'm putting pressure, but not a lot of back and forth. Okay, now that block is complete, so I'm just going to let those cool under there, but it looks just like this one, so I'm going to talk about this one. So, um I have done many quilts like this with tall pine trees because I love sewing tall pine trees. And so I just wanted to kind of let you know that it might be kind of fun to, instead of having six of these different boughs, you could do five, right? So you could have a little bit shorter tree. I would do the same, same thing here, measurements from the bottom down and from the top up, except for if you're doing a shorter tree, you might want, you're gonna have to do this piece larger to make up for the shorter difference in the background. And that's all you would do. You could make them three tall, three boughs tall, four, five, all different heights. You would just make up the difference here in the height of that background. And you could have trees going all the way across. You could do that as a bed runner, a table runner that way without the block in the middle that I'm gonna talk about um, next week. But, you know, I just think trees are really fun to make and you can just make many rolls and make a big quilt or whatever and it was really fun um using you know many of the greens i think i used all of the greens i'm not sure in the hometown holiday fabric collection which is what you know we made this quilt out of and so this is all hometown holiday and um i just think it would be really fun just for um trees in a tree stand it reminds you of the tree farm right these little red tree stands that you would buy at the tree farms when I was little. Sometimes we would go cut the trees, sometimes we would buy them at the tree farm and they always had them in the little red stands. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial of my tall pines. Let's see how two of them look together. And like I say, I'll be back next week. Okay. And if you were making many trees, you wouldn't have to put them in this order, the greens. I just did that because that's what the quilt is like in that same order. And of course, for your quilt, you could do an applique star on the top of all of them as well. 
but for my project, I'm not doing any applique for the table topper. It's all going to be pieced. And so I'll be back next week and um, I'm gonna be trying to film on my own. So we'll see how that goes. So thanks Cassidy for filming me and thanks Quilty Friends for joining me today and I will chat with you later. Thank you.